Sermon title, Are You Rapture Ready? Subtopic, Truth to Encourage and Prepare Readiness. Part 2, Old Testament Scripture by Pastor Kevin Quailchild Rodriguez. Online viewers, this is your brother, Pastor Kevin Quellchild Rodriguez, living on the Rock Ministries. And I pray, I hope, and I trust that this message find you all well. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are going to get started right now. Thank you, Jesus. It was put on my heart. We have... Uh, several folks uh, in need of healing in their body. The Word of God reminds us to uh, take our petitions to the throne room of grace, that he would hear from heaven and, uh, and heal us. And here today, we want to make some petitions known for several individuals. Um, we've got Julio in uh, middle, or is it uh, Verde Valley Medical Center. Um, we want to pray for Julio, his mom, and siblings. We want to continue praying for Trevor. Um, he's feeling a lot better, but, you know, mom felt the need to stay home with him today and continue giving him some some one-on-one uh, -on -one love to nourish him back to 100%. We're believing in that. Amen. He's breathing very well. He's uh, holding down all his fluids and feeds, but he's still not 100%. So we want to pray for 100% turnaround and healing for his body. And then my mother-in-law uh, is not here with us today, but she's also home and has some, um, you know, tummy issues. So we want to pray for her as well. And you may have petitions that you know of in your heart. And while we're praying together, Make those petitions known because he's hearing from us, amen, uh, that we pray on all occasions and especially for those who are like-minded and in, in, in God's children who, who believe and trust that his healing power will be um, upon us when we need it, amen. So let us go ahead and pray for these souls. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the ability to have the breath of life in us that we can speak on the behalf of others who may be too weak to speak for themselves, oh God. So we thank you for the ability. We pray, Lord, for Julio Sanchez, his mom, and, and his little brother Devin, Lord. But Julio's in the hospital by himself, and we pray that, Lord, a special touch from the kingdom, oh God, would come down to this earth and bless him the only way that you can. We pray a special divine touch of your healing upon his body, and we pray for peace and comfort, oh God, being away from his mom and from the, the place of comfort where he knows. And I can only imagine how it must feel being alone and in a, a place that you may not know too many people, oh God. But because there's this uh, uh, healing upon his body, he's there in the medical place to get some help. Lord, we pray, Dr. Jesus, you just touch him from heaven. And may he be comforted in that, uh, that, that room, oh God, in the hospital that even while his mom is away and his, his loved ones are away, that, Lord, you would bring him comfort in that place and bring the comfort to his mom and to the siblings, oh God, who may be uh, missing him because their family is not full with Julio out of the home. So here, Lord, we just pray your peace, which surpasses all human understanding, oh God, be upon that family. We pray also for Trevor, oh God, you've, you've, you've brought him a mighty long way after aspirating and, and choking on his own throw up, oh God, but here he is today, Lord, breathing on his own, didn't have to go to the uh, emergency, we came close, but Father, he needs 100% healing upon his body, and we pray that in Jesus' mighty name upon Trevor's body, oh Lord. Take him the full 100% of the way, oh God, we trust and believe in you, oh Lord. And we pray, Father, for my mother-in-law here today that has a tummy issue, Lord. I just pray you touch that tummy, touch those uh, issues and any other need represented here today that we have petitioned your kingdom for, oh God. The word reminds us, first seek ye the kingdom of God and all its righteousness will be added unto you. Lord, I trust and I believe in your promises, oh God. It's a good thing our hearts desires to see others who are weak in this time to become strong and well, made whole. And Lord, we just plead the blood upon them all in Jesus' mighty name, 
Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we're going to go ahead and get into uh, prayer for the word here today. <clears throat> so if you would turn with me to the book of John, and we're going to go to uh, chapter 8, book of John. chapter 8. This is going to be uh, a scripture that leads us into prayer today. Book of John chapter 8. We're going to read from verses 31 and 32. Book of John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32. When you get there, just say amen. I see some new Bibles in the house today. <laughs> Hallelujah. those Bibles out. Sword of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Book of John, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. And the word of the Lord reads, <clears throat> To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. Everybody look to your neighbor and say, the truth, the truth. The truth. And the truth will set you free. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Here today, I believe, oh God, your word is going to come forth spiritually, oh God. We're not just going to get it in the literal, but we're going to get it in the spiritual, oh Lord. Your word become alive, active, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Because, Lord, the truth helps to give us knowledge, and knowledge helps to guide us along this crazy path in this crazy world, which has a lot of evil, a lot of influences, oh God. But the truth guides us even and navigates us through this crazy, tumultuous, tumultuous world, this crazy, perverted world, oh God. And you know, I used to do much bidding for the dark side, but Lord, thank you for rescuing a wretch like me and putting me upon level ground and giving me another chance, oh God, having rescued me, saving me, oh Lord. But here today, Lord, as we talk about a sensitive issue and the, the biblical prophecies and even some of our native prophecies that parallel, oh God, that speak to the times in which we see here today in these end times. Lord, are we rapture ready? And that is a question that we asked ourselves, even the topic of our sermon here today. Are we rapture ready, O oh God? Help us to understand so we have the proper perspective, not to get discouraged, not to fear, O oh God, because your spirit doesn't give us into a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind, Father. So here today, Lord, may your knowledge come into us because we don't want to perish for the lack of knowledge, but allowing the truth to set us free and to help others be set free too. So here today, Lord, may your words of life be deposited in deep soil in our heart, rich soil in our heart, a willing spirit about us, oh God. We lay our heart open and bare to you. Holy Spirit, take full control. Nothing that manifests here today. Do we glory in the flesh, but Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor and glory to you in heaven, in spirit. Holy Spirit, take full control of this message here today. In Jesus' name, we say amen and amen. Come on, let's give God one more hand clap of praise here today. <coughs> Just to sort of uh, lead us into where we're at today in this five-part message that the Lord has birthed into my spirit. Uh, late last year, God said, you're going to start to do some more teaching on end times. And uh, we had a prophetic uh, meeting with a group of elders, you know, uh, late last year. And the question came up during this time that I had been uh, getting some downloads from God. He was been speaking into my spirit about do some more teaching because it had been since May of 2020, just a few months after the onset of, of COVID and all that that brought, right? <clears throat> He would birth this into my spirit then, but he brought it back and said, we got we to gotta preach and teach on it some more. But to do it in an encouraging way. 
not in a way that, see, some people can look at some truths and if they're not fully equipped with the armor of God, it's easy to say, well, I'm, I'm going to fear that or I'm going to let that. No, but that's not what God wants for us. So this teaching is to help to encourage us to not only be prepared, but to be ready. More than ever before, we see just how much of things that even our ancestors had talked about, right? And there's a path, you know, and I, and I felt very inclined today, very encouraged to share of even the two paths that Jesus speaks of our, our Hopi people speak of as well. And the beautiful thing that as I continue to um, learn more about the, the, the Hopi prophecy rock, <clears throat> and it speaks of two paths, right? And the top path is materialistic, the love of money, you know, above God, all that stuff. It's the wrong path that the Bible speaks of. The bottom path, which leads to a fruitful life, <clears throat> speaks to, you know, the spiritual path and the, you know, loving creator and, and, and God. And this is the spiritual path. But no matter where you find yourself in this upper path, and it's the wrong path, you can always go back to the bottom path and get right, right? And it speaks to the redemptive power of our Creator, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And even in the Hopi, um, uh, you know, teachings as I'm learning, they even speak of the first and the last. Well, Jesus in the book of Revelation, right? We have no fear. We understand the prop. We have proper perspective when we get into our word and we listen to the truth. And it doesn't matter where truth comes from. When truth bears witness to your spirit, there's a supernatural, um, understanding and confirmation you know what I'm talking about right like no one could get credit for that but when it bears witness supernaturally you know that it's true right this truth right and it comes from different directions but no greater truth than that which our Creator sent his son to deliver us into this new covenant which was also spoken of to help bring harmony upon people right but it's speaks of the upper path and in, in the Bible that's the wide path that leads to destruction but the lower path is the narrow gate that leads to life eternal same uh, paths spoken just a little bit differently but what I love about the teaching of the Hopi prophecy rock is that you can always come back down to the right path and that speaks of the blood of Jesus, the redemptive blood of God who already shed his blood, not just for this group of people or that group of people, but the word of God says that the multitude in white robes one day that will be realized in heaven is from every nation, every tongue, every tribe. That is every people because God don't discriminate, amen? amen. So every time that we see that ourselves drifting and I, Lord knows I'm the worst backslider that I have sinned against God even after he saved me hello somebody and now the crazy thing is that he'll use a wretch like that the foolish of the world to now be used to even confound the wise to speak of things spiritual that not even a theologian can teach you at the greatest human college amen that the Spirit of God will be our teacher. And we believe in scriptures. He'll use a knucklehead like me to now teach spiritual things. Jesus did this through parables, through short stories. But I love that no matter where you find yourself in life, and even the book of Ezekiel talks about this, <laughs> doesn't matter how much bad you did in your past, you get right with God today. All that is forgotten about and you are good with God you live life eternal with him but Ezekiel also speaks of that if you were always good in life the best preacher pastor apostle evangelist teacher whatever all these titles and you did good all your life and then at, just before you died you started doing wicked things God says I don't remember none of your good things because you didn't get right with me before you died. And therefore, you don't have the life that even that wicked person that did much wickedness his, almost his whole life gets right at the end. God loves that. And his, his word is clear. It is not 
his intent that anyone would perish, but that we would repent. And see, when we come from that line of materialistic things and we come back down to the spiritual path, that represents us choosing the blood of Jesus to redeem us, take us from that person who was once uh, ill, walk in the path of destruction, maybe lovers of money. And I used to be a lover of money myself. I remember wanting the biggest house. I remember wanting all these materialistic things. And God put all that in our path to teach us a lesson, to even draw me closer to God, to draw my wife closer to God, because the word tells us that he uses all things in our life for our good, for those who are chosen and called according to his purpose. So that means no matter where we're at, yeah, I once was a lover, but like that Hopi teaching, I can come back down to the right path and get right with God. Every day that we live, every day that we see loved ones, every day is an opportunity while we still have breath in us to be an encourager to other people. Amen. So this teaching, last week we did on, you know, God wants to blow our mind literally, <laughs> but he wants to put the icing on the cake and blow our minds spiritually. So it has been my prayer all week as I'm praying for the services, praying for our souls, that we get that Hebrew word, that the Holy Spirit, the great spirit of God, would be that one which teaches us even as we start to read. But last week, he says, you, you, you're going to bring a full circle teaching in this thing. You're going you're to go with scriptures that were true, that spoke of, you know, the coming of Jesus. <laughs> uh, even before the floods ever came, during the days of Noah, before that time, the scriptures that led the generations before that flood. But he says, not only that, you're going to go post-deluge as well. And you're going to start using, you're going to bring a full circle teaching where pre-deluge, post-deluge, truth in scripture and native prophecy to bring full circle to this teaching. Today we're going to go into part two, which is going to be Old Testament truth. The foreshadowing of everything that we even see today coming to pass. Much still needs to come to pass, but to have the proper perspective, we need a full understanding of the truth. Amen. And that's what God wants for us. So today in part two, we're going to talk about uh, the Old Testament truths and, and get into that. Um, and then next week will be part three, will be New Testament. <clears throat> and I got to follow up uh, as well on Old Testament versus New Testament, or Old Covenant versus New Covenant. Because the Lord brought that back to, to my mind after a conversation. I want to make sure... <clears throat> that we are obedient to the Holy Spirit so that we all have full understanding. So today, as we lead in with today's um, uh, message laid into my spirit, we're, like I said before, we're going to have this one scripture that starts us out every time we get this teaching. Because God wants this drilled into our spirit so that it becomes a discipline. You know, if you lack discipline sometimes, and trust me, I've been guilty in many areas of my life lacking discipline, but God wants the discipline set in us so that the attitude that he's trying to provoke within us doesn't go dim and doesn't go away, but that we have this attitude of prepared and readiness as we continue to live our lives and even to be a blessing for other people. Amen. Some of you are not to just, you know, uh, some of you are going to be leading ministries yourself. And God wants to, to, to encourage us so that when that happens, we have the proper perspective. So that we're, a dis uh, we're not being a discourager, but we're being an encourager. Amen. So let's lead into today's message with that same scripture found in the New Testament. Book of Matthew. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. 
Book of Matthew 24, verses 36 through 51. Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear what your Spirit says to the church. <clears throat> Book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 51. And the word of the Lord reads, But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Make no mistake, his second coming. First coming was to bring salvation, to save us, right? John 3, 16. For he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that anyone who would believe in him would not perish but have what? Everlasting life. <clears throat> so this is talking about his second coming. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. Today we talked about truth and how truth sets us free. Because people who do not have the knowledge or uh, uh, have the discipline to maintain that knowledge or to build upon that knowledge, the word of God reminds us that many perish for the lack of knowledge. I don't want nobody to perish. When God heals you, when God saves you, he puts his character in you. And that long suffering that he has, even with a knucklehead like me, I didn't even get right with God until I was 35 years old. Right? But he was long suffering and, and patient with me until the right time came and he got my attention. And I believe many of us are going to see the opportunity when it exists. Just like God's long suffering, we can long suffer for others too. They may not get it the first time. That's okay. You lay that seed and you pray on it and you believe that it's going to germinate and, and grow like we were. But uh, this is talking about that very thing. Let's not be unaware, but let's be aware. Let's be vigilant, right? <clears throat> that is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken up and the other left. This is where we get rapture from, <clears throat> or translation, right? Where, you know, all of a sudden everything looks a certain way, and then phew, those who are dead or alive in Christ, phew, get raptured up into the sky in the heavenlies with the coming of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, right? But this is where we get that. And when we say, are you rapture ready? is because of this event. We want to make sure that we're right with God. We want to help make sure other people are right with Him. Amen. <clears throat> so, 41, two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other left. It's giving us a description there are some of those, when we got into the book of Enoch last week, right? And I'm glad there's interest. There should be interest. This book, Enoch, that was pre-deluge scriptures that should be in, these, in this common Bible, walked out of here. But that scripture, the Lord, when he called us to the indigenous with a focus upon indigenous lands, he said the book of Enoch is going to be a blessing to the indigenous people. And it is a book that more than any other book of scriptures is tribal. It has a tribal uh, posture about it, a tribal tone to it. Amen. So we talked about that scripture then, right, pre-deluge, but here we are, right? And even Enoch spoke of that, that, that those who are left to the earth, those who are good in God, will, will, will have another, there's a split, right, between heaven and hell. Huh. And it's not easy to talk about these things, right? It's not. But God wants us to get the truth so that we can be an encouragement. And look, let me make something extremely clear. Online viewers, because I know in some, in some uh, church circles it's popular that <clears throat> scaring people to heaven is, 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 is the strategy, spiritual strategy. And that is A backwards. That is so wrong. Because if that was the case, when the woman fell to Jesus' feet, when everybody wanted to see her stone, and even though it had been legal for them to do that because she was caught in the act of adultery, God with his grace fell down to the ground and touched her life. Not to fear her, <laughs> scare her, but to encourage. 
encourage you that no matter how dirty you think you are and everybody sees you, they're calling you out. <laughs> they want to see you stoned to death by the law of Moses. My grace is going to shatter this law. And he, as he looked upon the people and said, you who are without sin, knowing everybody was sinful, cast the first stone. Jesus went down and he started to write on the ground. And as he looked back up, they were all gone. And the only one left at the feet of Jesus was the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And when Jesus says, sin no more, what did she do? She repented and she turned from that lifestyle and she started following the ministry of Jesus forevermore. That's for us. <laughs> so brothers and sisters online here in the pew, look, we don't scare people to heaven. <laughs> we love and we encourage them to heaven. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Lord. Verse 9, then you will be handed over. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm going backwards. <laughs> Chapter 24, now I believe we're at uh, verse 42. Therefore, keep watch. See, Jesus is saying, keep watch, be vigilant. Know for yourself. Know how to understand the times. Know how to, to discern what it is that we are seeing in the, the uh, biblical understanding so that why? We have proper perspective. Amen. Because you do not know what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have left his house to be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and the wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his house to hold, to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. No wonder why Jesus says, disciples, you love me, then feed my sheep. When you get strong in the Lord, when you get strong in the knowledge, you will help to pick the weak up and not just keep them down. You will feed them life. You will feed them truth. You will encourage them up out of their situation. In a weak slumber, you now pick them up and help them become strong. So it's no wonder why Jesus is talking about <clears throat> seeing a man who, who is found doing the right thing to feed those who need help being fed. It'll be wise for that person to do that. <clears throat> Truly, I tell you, he will be put in charge of all his possessions. Because when you are faithful in the little, God will bless you with more. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. <coughs> The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not, he is not aware of, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. <laughs> Look to your neighbor and say, Jesus don't play. Jesus don't play. One thing Jesus does not like, even if you were the best teacher of the law, the best teacher of the Old Testament of Moses and the latter prophets. If you weren't practicing what you preach, Jesus got in your face, especially a man of the cloth, especially to rebuke you. To see that hypocritical spirit about you, he hated it. But those who were broken, hurting on the street, he says, for the least of these you did also. For. That's where his mercy, he didn't come to save the healed. He says, I come to save the sick. I come to heal the sick, right? 
So all these people who were hypocritical, the Pharisees, the, the Sadducees, right, <coughs> who thought they knew all about Old Testament, couldn't even understand and discern that the Messiah, who was prophesied even <laughs> from Old Testament, was standing in their face. But here we go. Where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, that's what he's saying is a sign for the hypocrites. Those who say one thing and do another thing. His word says, for every empty word, and this is for all of us, myself included. For every empty word, we will hold an account to God. But the good thing is, is if you got repentance on your side, you know that you can go like Apostle Paul says, boldly before the throne room of grace. Get that confidence now while we still can. Because those who say one thing and do another thing and act hypocritically is one of the fastest ways that will lead you down a path, that, that path of the Hopi prophecy rock that is materialistic and selfish and, you know, <clears throat> is not of the spiritual path, will lead us down that path quicker than anything else. But Jesus did not play around with hypocrisy. But that is the scripture as we lead in here today. The sermon title, as I've shared with you, is Are You Rapture Ready? Am I Rapture Ready? As much as this message is for you, it's also for me. Amen. What's good for you is good for me. So before I even preach a thing, this has already started to convict me. Because some of the things that I preach to you, right, are the same things that I need to walk out my faith with God, my salvation, as the Bible says, with fear and trembling. And that means that we respect the one who has control over everything. Amen? So the subtopic, truth to encourage and prepare <coughs> us <clears throat> to prepare readiness. Truth to encourage and prepare readiness. Just like this scripture, amen? Amen that we, we read, it is to prepare us, is to get us ready to be watchful of the things. <clears throat> and as we talk about, you know, um, these messages, think about it for yourself, like what you see so that you can apply that attentiveness, that, that, that watchfulness, even in the things that you're seeing in your lives. Because sometimes we see, you know, from different angles with our different families and so forth, but what is being spoken of the truth to prepare us and to start even, uh, what would you call it, analyzing, using scripture, the teaching, to sort of help you understand, to give you proper perspective of what's taking place. Amen. So we need proper perspective. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. <clears throat> Real quick, I'll share a quick testimony. I can't make this stuff up. This happened just this week. As we get ready for the word found in the Old Testament, talking about the end times, same things that we learned in, in the book of Enoch last week, we're going to learn today in the book of Isaiah and Daniel. <coughs> but I had a sister reach out to me, a sister from uh, Navajo Nation, <coughs> who I watched. <laughs> On Zoom, if you think that, you know, you have to be physically, I have learned during the pandemic that God will flow and bring revival even to Zoom meetings. Where in your little office or family room or wherever we might have, in the bedroom, <laughs> living room, I've seen God come down in our household, come down in the places of worship of those who were tuning in from Zoom in different areas, whether there was Window Rock, Arizona, or, or, or um, uh, uh, Farmington, New Mexico, <clears throat> or Texas. Wherever people were coming in, we felt the presence of the Holy Spirit just fall upon our worship in our respective places. I watched this lady, my sister, and some of her brothers get anointed by God. And as God would speak to me, even under the tent in Tunley, uh, what was it, two years ago, in, what was it, 2021, August 2021, this special gift that she had 
Because as she was uncontrollably speaking in other tongues, and we were, we were just in awe of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our respective places, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit would begin to have me translate and understand and, and, and know what she was speaking in that heavenly tongue that she was speaking. And what she was doing, what God was showing me, is the souls that were put on her heart. She felt the souls of the hurting people upon a region. It's a very unique uh, gift. And I've only seen a few people have it. But under that tent meeting, <clears throat> there was another woman that had that gift. And the same translation would come, but for a region, they feel the pain of those in that region. <clears throat> and I remember that day, I was able to help to confirm that so that the church would properly recognize this <laughs> gift so that we tap into it. When God shows us a gift, it's not to hoard. It's not to, oh, it, it, it's to be a blessing for others <laughs> and freely Jesus says I come to give but I don't give like the world gives I give freely so if we're standing in line to pay twenty dollars to hear a prophet <laughs> and try to encourage us that better smell that okay but the, the gifts are they're they're given freely to be a blessing of, to the community and I was able to confirm this. So this is the girl that came to, the, 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 the sister that came to me and one of the other elders in our prophetic voice uh, uh, group. And she says, you too. I had this come upon me. The Holy Spirit fell, uncontrollably speaking in tongue. Then he, he had me go right to the book of Isaiah, chapter 24, which happened to be one of the books I was already planning to have read in our presence here today. So she began to give me the details of this dream, this vision, the Holy Spirit right after her dream come, right? And I knew from my end, she knew what the Holy Spirit was speaking to her. The revelation given her, she wanted to hear me tell her, she wanted to hear the other uh, elder pastor tell her, but the Holy Spirit said, you ask her what that means to her. And I asked her, and she revealed exactly what it meant. So today, you know, I'm encouraged to bring this testimony because God has a way of speaking confirmations, not <clears throat> that you don't trust and believe in him, but that it will go well with others because the word of God reminds us that not only by the blood of Jesus, but that's the most important thing, but by the word of our testimony. So when you have the blood of Jesus active in your life and it coats your testimony, your story of life, it helps it to translate into being a blessing for others. And this is how we overcome darkness. By the, word, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So I share this, you know, to kind of help lead us in and encourage us. But we got confirmation just through that. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, <laughs> we're going to get encouraged today. The truth is not to harm us. God is not to harm us, but for us to understand what the truth is so we have proper perspective as we navigate through these waters. And some people, even kids, right? I'm here in tent meetings in, uh, upon the indigenous lands in, in, in Canada. Children are getting prophetic nuggets, downloads from God, and they're sharing them with the church. Children, and in the word of God, in the, in the, especially in the 12 minor prophets leading up to the New Testament or the New Covenant, right? That, that children will prophesy and our elders will dream dreams. So if you know that there's dreams happening a lot right now, and you know there's something spiritually, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, specific and, and charged about it, it's probably because God is trying to reveal some things. We're hearing this through kids, and even in our group here, we're hearing. We listen to what the children say. Some people just feel a difference in the atmosphere. They just feel it. And I feel led by Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to remind me. One of the things that I've been learning, and I've been watching some of these, these, these teachings over, because God wants to, he wants to give me a discipline about this learning. He doesn't want me to lose it so that I can co help to connect things that were said a little bit differently over here that is truth, said a little different. Don't disregard either of them, but be encouraged by both and bring harmony to these things. This helps respect, it helps to bridge uh, uh, the love for each other, but it's because we know in the spirit, not just because what we see in the physical, the word of God says that we walk by faith, and that's spiritual. Faith is the substance of things not seen, evidence for which we hope for. It is spiritual. We walk by faith and not what we just see in our physical eyes right but this <clears throat> teaching talked about 13 years ago the onset as this elder in the Hopi tribe talked about purification the very first prophetic uh, voice gathering we had when we released this according to the will of God to speak into the atmosphere what God was teaching us that lines up with Bible we all closed out. We had several elders from different tribes in this first release. All of us came into agreement that what God is speaking prophetically is the purification of the church. And this was right on the onset. We're right in the middle of COVID. But sometimes God has to bring something to the world Get your attention. Amen. So that you can see that even people like me who say they're pastors, uh, let's see how the pastor acts when his faith is challenged. When his wife is dying at the, the bed of, of a hospital, can I still praise God? When my child <laughs> is, is hurt, will I still praise God? When loved ones begin to die away, will I still be thankful and praise God? Sometimes God had to bring something like a COVID. We see this year after year after year throughout the Old Testament. God allowed plagues. Why? Because the people would become so wicked and he had to get our attention. But we closed out of this first prophetic release and we all agreed God is purifying the church. Too much corruption, even in the church. We got to purify that thing. But 13 years ago, elders already foresaw what I'm barely talking about now. And among the other elders is this process of purification. So I believe there were people that were seeing the foreshadow of this way before even I was, uh, before I was even saved. Amazing. But that's what this does for us is that when we bridge these truths and we understand biblically what they mean, <clears throat> we can expect God to allow us to know the truth in a way that helps to bring harmony. Right? Harmony. Harmony. As much as it is up to us, we are to live in harmony with one another. And we're missing this in the church right now, y'all. So this teaching is very important so that we can, we can allow God to allow us to be a part of what we would call the remnant of the, the body of Christ. It's one thing to say, you're, you know, oh, I love God, I love Jesus. <clears throat> but if you do that, this word even today says, I will know that you love me by keeping my commands and my teaching. And when you do that, I will know that you love me and that will translate in us treating people better. Turn with me now to the book of Isaiah, chapter 24. Book of Isaiah, chapter 24. <clears throat> Whew. Sorry, 
why I'm getting a little. I, I actually have a sweater to go under that because I thought it was going to be so cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I drove here with no sweater on. I was tripping out. Isaiah chapter 24. Father, again, give us ears to hear what your spirit says to the church. Isaiah chapter 24. Again, I preface with this. Here's one of the scriptures God laid into my spirit, parallels with what we read last week in Enoch, okay? And not only that, a sister would ask for confirmation, which she ended up being her own blessing because we, we challenged her to confirm for herself what she already knew. Sometimes that's what we need to do with one another to help encourage us to build us up. Amen. Where did the Lord read? See, the Lord is going to lay waste the earth and devastate it. He will ruin its face and scatter its inhabitants. Listen to this. It will be the same for priests as for people. For the master as for his servant. For the mistress as for her servant. For the seller as for buyer, for borrower, as for lender, for debtor, as for creditor. Quick pause. No one escapes, you know, the, 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 the wrath of God or the, the, the progression of the things that take place on this earth. And as our ancestors talk about Mother Earth being uh, sick, because we steal from her and we don't give back, right? It's disrespecting that which helps to give us even life. And in turn, we start to disrespect one another. But God is saying, when I get your attention, I'm going to do it from the, the person who thinks they're a man of God as much as for the person uh, who, who, who is the creditor or the debtor. Everybody will know that God is getting our attention. The, see, money doesn't supersede that. We know rich people that died even of COVID. We know people that thought that COVID wasn't even real and wasn't listening to the science for their own health benefit die of COVID. I watched pastors I loved downplay the truth of that thing, and they themselves died. Pride if we're not careful, can enter our hearts. Every day my prayer is, Lord, keep my heart, which I know can turn wicked again if I am not careful, in your hands. If you think a thing can't happen to you, it's because it's very close to happening to you. The earth will be completely laid waste and totally plundered the Lord has spoken this word. The earth dries up and withers. The world languishes and withers. And we see some of our rivers and lakes drying up, right? The rivers Euphrates uh, is, is drying up, right? The icebergs for the polar bear are melting. We're seeing travail upon this earth as it is spoken of here, as it was spoken even in the book of Enoch last week. The earth is defiled by its people. They have destroyed the laws, violated the statues, and broken the everlasting covenant. Our ancestors, as I would begin to learn what has been passed down even unto people today that can share the, how this truth is preserved, not because it was written down on paper, but properly passed. I mean, it it's, blows my mind how the truth is so well preserved just through talking and storytelling among one another. <clears throat> but our ancestors speak and have passed down that <clears throat> people disobey the law of the land, the law which helps to preserve that which we need to stay alive. Now earth is sick. We see it through this travailing, right? 
But it's like that song, you know, Sound of Silence. I don't know if you guys have heard that in the sound of silence, right? That song is speaking of a complacency of people. And God doesn't want us to be complacent. He wants us to be awakened. He wants us to know so that these things really matter to us and we can help to influence others so that it is, it's, it's purposeful and ma it matters in their lives as well. Amen. <clears throat> therefore, the earth's inhabitants, uh, therefore a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilt. <clears throat> Therefore, earth's inhabitants are burned up and very few are left. The new wine dries up and the vines wither. All the merrymakers groan, the joyful trembles are still. The noise of the revelers have stopped the joy, for harp is silent. No longer do they drink wine with a song. The beer is bitter to its drinkers. The... Uh, Ruined city lies desolate. The entrance to every house is barred. Pause real quick. This whole desolate thing, right? Can you imagine, you know, um, what, what, and we'll get into some of it today, but, but this desolation, you know, when you think of desolation, it's something that looks uh, dead and, and, and bleak, uh, lacking in habitation and life. And yet, Desolation is repeated throughout Scripture. We had a word come in, a prophetic word come in, and just before, and it's crazy how God sometimes prophetically speaks exactly one week prior to an event. Why? To keep your eyes open. Why? So that you have proper perspective. So then rather than go into fear and and, 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 and being worried, you would know keenly for yourself, spiritually for yourself, the truth, so that it be a blessing and to prepare you and to be a, 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 a way of equipping in life eternal, not just for you, but to influence that for others. But the word came in just one week before the Travis Scott concert in Texas that eight lives were lost. It was a demonic, demonic concert. And I can say that in the presence of the Lord because I have gotten great revelation. But just one week before that human sacrifice took place, and make no mistake, <laughs> that's how the dark world works. And if you talk to people who, who operate in that world, do the bidding for the enemy. Even I myself once did that. Speak of the promotions of the dark world. It's evil, it's wicked, right? But one week before that, God spoke into my spirit, the edging in, the creeping in of the abomination that causes desolation. This is a place of worship that was even foreshadowed with Jesus when he overturned tables. There's only one spot in the scriptures where Jesus got violent himself. And it's because church folk were going to church to make money and they're in the presence of God in the temple Loving money more than God, even church folk. So Jesus says, you have become a den of robbers. And he starts cracking the whip, overturning tables. Why? He was stirred because people stopped reverencing God. And it was the foreshadowing of that abomination in spiritual worship in the presence of God. And we see it being foreshadowed and foreshadowed. One week before this Travis Scott concert, God spoke to me those words. He said, pay attention. A week later, that concert happened. And it was so sad to hear people who had no idea what was about to happen, the crunching of the souls and, and the pressure that was going to be uh, uh, applied upon these people. They had no idea what was about to happen. And then just nonchalantly, with no remorse, passing a dead body, and this eerie sound from the rapper that, that was so demonic sounding. All of this in the presence of God. Everything that we do in this world is in his sight. And when we think that it ain't, that it's hidden and he won't see it, his word says, <laughs> everything that you think you've done in the dark, I will eventually bring it to the light. Right? 
<clears throat> Let us continue on here. Verse uh, 10. The ruined city lies desolate. The entrance to every house is barred. In the streets they cry out for wine. All joy turns to gloom. All joyful sounds are banished from the earth. The city is left in ruins. Its gates is battered to pieces. So will it be on the earth and among the nations as when an olive tree is beaten or as when gleanings are left after the grape harvest. Can you imagine that? Even the word of God in the book of, in the Old Testament, <laughs> in, in the laws of Moses, is that when you, had, when you were blessed with land and you grew grapes or you grew corn, <laughs> whatever you did, that Mother Earth produced fruit, right? God says, you're blessed with this that I have blessed you with. You only go through it one time. If you see that there's a grape left on a vine or a cob corn, uh, corn on the cob that you left, leave it there. Because people who are poor who travel through, that'll help them get them continued along their way. One time I was driving my bike <clears throat> and I drove by this cornfield, but there's only a few of them out there on the outskirts. That, God, the Holy Spirit spoke to me as I was riding my bike. That's for the gleanings of those that God spoke of, even I believe it's in the book of Deuteronomy, but it talks about leaving those for those who might need it along, the stranger who's on their way. That's appreciating life. That is respecting one another. That is a blessing, and it brought me to tears. I'm riding my bike just crying all the way. <laughs> it was that spiritual to me. Amen. 14, they raise their voices. They shout for joy from the west. They acclaim the Lord's majesty. Therefore, in the east, give glory to the Lord. Exalt the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. In the islands of the sea, from the ends of the earth, we hear singing glory to the righteous one. But I said, whenever God puts a but in his scripture, he's going to transition us quickly. But I said, I waste away, I waste away. Woe to me, the treacherous betray. With treachery, the treacherous betray, terror and pit and snare await you, people of the earth. Whoever flees at the sound of terror will fall into a pit. Whoever climbs out of the pit will be caught in a snare. Make no mistake, it's saying beware of falsehood. Don't pay attention to it and know how to know it for yourself. When something false is being spoken to you, uh, if you don't know that it's false, you're vulnerable to the untruth of that. And it can lead you astray. But scripture also warns us of false prophets. Those who were warning to the few true prophets, God was saying, look, uh, my people is desolating the, 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 the lands here. Uh, I have a different message than what the false prophets who are many. <laughs> We saw that ourselves, even in these United States of America. Many false prophets saying what God was not speaking in the spirit. In some cases, exactly 180 degrees off. And it's to what? God uses those few who are unpopular. <laughs> he uses that praying man or woman who's unpopular to speak truth. And he uses that which everybody else thinks is foolish, and he'll use that to confound the wise who think they know that, have it all there, all understood, right? All that in a bag of chips. Those people are prideful. They'll use the fool, what they think is foolish to confound them. But I said, I waste away, I waste away. Woe to me, the treacherous betray. Oh, let's go. To, I think I'm down at uh, now to 18. Whoever flees at the sound of terror will fall into a pit. Whoever climbs out of the pit will be caught in a snare. The floodgates of heaven are open. The foundations of the earth shake. The earth is broken up. The earth splits asunder. The earth is violently shaken. The earth reels like a drunkard. It, it sways like a hurt in the wind. So heavy upon his guilt of its rebellion, 
that it falls, never to rise again. 21, in that day the Lord will punish the power, listen to this, that day the Lord will punish the powers in the heavens above and the kings on the earth below. No matter how high you are, as high as heavenlies or below, and make no mistake, the fallen angels <laughs> and those who are, are wickedly, uh, you know, whether they're presidents or those of high authority, the word of God tells us that even those kings and presidents and those of high authority who abuse their authority, everything in between, as high as the heavens and as low as the earth, this judgment is coming. They will be herded together like prisoners bound in a dungeon. They will be shut up in prison and punished after many days. Listen to this, the moon will be dismayed, the sun ashamed, for the, Almighty, for the Lord Almighty will reign on Mount Zion in Jerusalem and before its elders with great glory. See, <clears throat> after all this stuff of what's going to happen at some point in time, God saying, my glory is upon my people. The elders here, right? will be in my glory forever. But make no mistake, he's trying to get our attention so we're watchful. Because some people, and we see this in our own family, believe it or not, where people are touched by God. Got a miraculous healing by God. Started doing well by God. And now refuse him. Walk away from him. If we're not careful, that can happen to us. But God is trying to prepare us. Real quick, let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 12. We're going to seal this uh, teaching here today on part two. Daniel, chapter 12. <coughs> Amen. I know when the Holy Spirit gets our attention because even as you are bringing forth the word, it's so silent that it grips our soul. Amen. <coughs> you got my attention, Lord. Book of Daniel, chapter 12, starting at verse 1. And the word of the Lord reads, At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. This is saying that when the second coming comes, make no mistake, it's going to even be worse. This tribulation is going to be even worse than the flood during Noah's time. <clears throat> but at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, everybody say, in the book, in the book, <laughs> will be delivered. I'm in the book. You should be in the book. Amen. <clears throat> We're in the book. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Listen. Some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. Even Jesus says, so let your light shine. <laughs> and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. I'm looking at some who I don't think I know are going to be shining like the stars in heaven because where God has taken you is to be a blessing for the community, not for selfish gain. Hello, somebody. <coughs> and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever <coughs> and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. We're getting knowledge today, y'all. We're getting knowledge, amen. Verse 8, I'm sorry, verse 5. Then Daniel looked, and there before me stood two others, one on this bank of the river and one on the other side of the bank. One of them said to the, to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? 
real quick. You know, we learn about, you know, Jesus walking on water and Peter was like, hey, take me with you, <laughs> right? Like, like as long as he was focused and can you believe? I mean, it's amazing, right? It is written, it is documented, but the waters of life, as treacherous, treacherous as they were, Jesus was just walking on that thing. And Peter says, I want to go to you, Lord. He says, come. He starts walking. But then he starts to pay more attention to all this crazy activity taking place. And then what happens? He starts to sink. And in his sinking, save me, Lord. And the Lord pulled him up and said, you of little faith. That's us. He's building us, our faith. Because Peter, in the book of Acts, right, would later on, after Jesus ascends to go with, to be with the Father, would start to know people's hearts and say, I know what you're thinking. You're lying to the church right now. You're lying to the Holy Spirit. And as he called people out, that was because he once had little faith or no faith to now a man of God who has great faith. Amen. It's a process. It don't happen overnight. It progresses, amen. <laughs> but Jesus was the foreshadowing even here of the man walking upon the waters, amen. And the man clothed, and make no mistake, this is the son and the father talking across the lake here. The foreshadowing, Jesus is foreshadowed throughout Old Testament, foreshadowed even in Enoch, the pre-deluge, the very first chapter the elect one to come with his holy angels, ten thousands upon ten thousands. <laughs> we cannot walk away from the truth. <clears throat> okay, the man clothed in linen, uh, let's see, it will be for, oh, so just a little bit after uh, verse seven, right? So let's go to verse seven again. The man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river lifted his right hand and his left hand toward heaven and I heard him swear by him who lives forever saying, it will be for a time, times a half a time when the power of the holy people has been finally broken and all these things will be completed. I heard but did not understand so I asked, my Lord, what will the outcome of all this be? <coughs> See, as prophets, it ain't your gift. <laughs> you are a vessel. You are a tool that God has used. It is God speaking through the prophet. Amen. It is not your gift. It is his. <clears throat> it is his instrument and his word of truth being spoken. So here's... Uh, 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 Daniel, right? Here's Daniel, great prophet of God, dream interpreter, asking God a question. Hallelujah. My Lord, what will the outcome of all this be? Here's what is replied to him. He replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. And make no mistake, this is the same scroll spoken of even in the book of Revelation after New Testament, but we'll get in that later. Many will be purified. There's that word again. Look to your neighbor say purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, look, and it, it hurts. <laughs> and you can't lose hope. You can't lose uh, the, 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 the miraculous power of God. But there are times people will start getting right and they will turn again. And that's why sometimes when Jesus reminds us, the wicked will continue doing wicked. The righteous will continue doing righteous. But make no mistake, God blesses all his children. He says, I bless my righteous as much as I bless the unrighteous. Why? Because my son comes up and it blesses all men. And like he says, it is my heart's desire that no man perish, but repent and have everlasting life. That's our daddy in heaven. That's how his character is. But unfortunately, we're going to have to see a lot of wickedness. And we are going to have to stay strong and endure and continue to trust and hope that even some of those in wicked areas and things will get right with God. We can't lose heart on that. Amen. 
Go your way, Daniel, he says here. Many, many will be purified, made spotless and refined. We've got to let that sink in, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. When we are so engulfed in our selfish desires, and trust me, I know what that is like. We don't listen to good counsel. We don't listen to good judgment. We, we could be those people. I was once so um, skeptical that, that you could speak to me till you were blue in the face. It wouldn't make no difference to me. But when the time was right, when my soil became rich, having re reached my bottom, I became that, that person who was once defiled and was made pure. It says here, many will be purified. Amen. We got to have hope and trust that even in these dark times, many will be purified. Verse 11, from the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished, listen, and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. It makes no, it does not surprise me that we have our, our ancestors, our elders speaking of, even of 13 years ago, talking about this purification. It's started, y'all. Verse 12, blessed is the one who waits for, blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 uh, days. We're going to get more into these numbers when we, when we do the teaching on the uh, number five, and we're going to correlate all these things. But these are all translated into the things that are taking place even in the New Testament. They corroborate, they connect, old, new, even pre-deluge. These all connect so that it's an irrefutable truth that even if you don't get it spiritually, you're going to get it literally. But it's my hope that we get it beyond the literal sense and it becomes spiritual. <clears throat> Verse 13, as we close out here today, as for you, go your way to the end. You will rest and then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. Amen. Let us stand to our feet as we pray out here today. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, here today that your truth, O oh God, becomes our knowledge to encourage, to inspire others, to turn others even from their unrighteousness. And your word says that covers over a multitude of sin. Lord, you are raising up leaders even in here in this sanctuary, oh God. We pray a blessing and an enduring spirit that no matter what we see, oh God, we're going to hold on to your truth and help to teach of the things that, that are seemingly hard that you bring simply to those who are ordained and, and, and anointed to teach. Here today, Lord, we pray that special anointing, O oh God, to those that you want to anoint, O oh Lord, <clears throat> to teach, to be a, a beacon of light even in the midst of great darkness, that from your knowledge that we and allowed to come into our heart here today would be everlasting blessing even unto others, O oh God, that we would have wisdom, the gift that changes atmospheres, the gift of wisdom to bring light in a dark place and people who were depressed will be picked up in spirit, oh God, to be strong, getting right and going back down the right path with you, Father. Here today, Lord, deal with our heart, any of us, oh God, that is, that is uh, in need, oh Lord, of you. Your rescue, I pray your rescue right now upon our online viewers and those here upon this sanctuary, oh God. I once was in need of rescue, but now, Lord, you maintain me. Father, we pray the maintenance of your word upon your children here today, that even in these end times, Lord, we know that we know that we know we are rapture ready. Hallelujah. So here today, Lord, we thank you for your gift of salvation, the free gift that comes to us, that when we cry out to you, Lord, you will save us because we trust and we believe in you by faith. Hallelujah. 
So here today, Lord, bless the online viewers. Bless our congregation here today in your presence, Lord. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you for the healing upon those souls that we lifted up here on today. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Online viewers, this is your brother, Pastor Kevin Quailchild Rodriguez, Living on the Rock Ministries. And until next time, we love you. God bless you.